Hey, what is good, A team? It's your boy T back at it with another reaction, coach. If y'all couldn't tell from the title, we are back with yet another Quando Rondo reaction, bro. Like I said, he obviously he about to milk this damn interview with uh, Angela Yee. We actually dropped the part one reaction to this uh, earlier this morning. If y'all haven't seen that, a link will be up there. Y'all be sure to go check that out. It's been I feel like it's been people kind of on both sides and even people like in the in the middle as far as like it's people who's fully on Quando Rondo's side. Like, yeah, everything he's saying is spot on. There's people that's fully on the opposite side. Like, nah, bro, you wildin', like you lying about this, lying about that. Especially the, the part where he was like, he didn't know him and King Von had issues. There's people that's like, nigga, how you did, you ain't no way you didn't know, my nigga. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, I can, I can, I can understand. And it's also some people who's kind of, in the like middle i feel like i'm somewhat in the middle but it's like i understand some of what king bond did but at the same time i still it's like you gotta hold him accountable for running up on Quando rondo um because if he didn't run up on him you know what i'm saying i wouldn't assume that the whole shooting and all that stuff would have happened you feel me the whole incident i don't think that it would have happened how it did had they not ran up on him and did all that but um, like I said, if y'all haven't seen my reaction to part one, so you can get the full understanding of what we, or of my thoughts up to this point of the interview, and y'all, well, I already dropped a, a link up there. It might be a link in the description as well, but, uh, definitely be sure to go check that out first. That was like a 20 minute video. You feel me? And I was giving y'all a couple, a little bit of insight on some of the stuff I went through personally, but, um, that was not that same situation, but it was like had that had the situation I was in went like that. I can understand if one of my boys had a strap on him, pulled it out, and just let off if it's four, five, ten niggas trying to trying to jump me type thing. You feel me? Um, but either way, bro, we about to go ahead and hop on into this part two of the interview. Let me get y'all right. Hold on, bro. And they just dropped it two hours ago. It's almost at 100,000 views now. Y'all know I'm going to have my, uh, just like I did in part one, I'm going to put my little ATV thing up here because I tried to post it yesterday for the part one reaction, and they blocked it. I'm like, nigga, how y'all, <laughs> it's 15 people who didn't react to this same exact video. Y'all blocking it? Like, what's going This is an interview, my nigga, not a music video. But either way, bro, let me, let me go ahead and get y'all right. It's part two, right? And the first one was six minutes. This one's five minutes, 30 seconds. So I would assume they just gonna hop right into it, but we gonna see. I'm guessing he got the same intro with the song. And for all the ones, if this is your first time tuning in and you haven't seen my reaction to part one, I was mentioning there, I wasn't really too big of a fan of Quando. Well, I wasn't a fan of Quando Rondo at all. King Von, I wasn't really the biggest fan, but I was kind of growing on to him. Or he was, his music was kind of growing on to me a little bit more, like literally right before he passed. But definitely wasn't the biggest fan of either one of these guys, but I followed the whole story um, once it happened. Because it's just wild to me that there's so many um, younger artists, you know what I'm saying, passing away. Not even just artists, you feel me? Because stuff like this, I feel like happened all all day long whether it be in a Chicago or a New York or really anywhere where it's younger kids out there who might be who might be going through situations like this where they passing away because of an incident that happened like this, but they're not as known as a big big name rapper or something. Um, so they don't really have a spotlight on them like that, you feel me? But either way, like I said, we go into these straight down, we in the middle, bro. We ain't on nobody's side, we just taking the information in as they saying it. And I feel like we still got to take Quando Rondo's side of the story with a grain of salt because, I mean, what are the chances you're going to come out and say I was wrong here or there? What are the chances he's going to do that? It's highly unlikely. So while we are getting his side of the story, we can never fully hear King Von's side of the story either. So, cause, I mean, it could be people in King Von's camp who could tell the story, but it's like King Von might have other information that they might not. You feel me? But this is all we got to go off of, so let's see who this talking about. I know I say this every time. Quando give me a like NBA young boy kind of vibe, low key, or at least from these few snippets he didn't put at the at the start of the interview. 
but I believe he is a social media. Bruh, if y'all don't come on and get to the interview. Like, it's like I had an out-of-body experience. This is what everybody was cooking him on. They like, damn, King Von hit you that hard, my nigga? <laughs> you know what I gave you an out-of-body experience type of shit? You feel me? You feel me? Soon as I got hit, like, like, man, I put this on my dead grandma Terry Graves, man. I'm like, man, I swear to God on everything I love, man. I'm like, man, I think about this shit every day, like, nobody know, like, what I went through, like, somebody else would have panicked. Man, what the hell are you talking? First of all, the way he tells the story. Hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, we got to acknowledge this. One of the niggas commented on our part one reaction to this and was like, bro, get get a, get a King Von nuts out your mouth, bro. <laughs> I'm like, my nigga, what are you talking about? Did you even watch the full reaction? Like, what the fuck is you talking about? Now, I don't think it's even popping up on there because I got it in my notifications, but when I clicked on the video, the comment wasn't there. And I'm like, bro, what is you talking about? I literally gave King Von more. Uh, I I feel like I was harder on King Von than I was on Quando Rondo, because I was saying like, if you're gonna run up on somebody, you gotta be ready for that same energy. But people is roasting this man based off of how he tells the story, how he talks, how many times he said, "You feel me?" Somebody started from the beginning. Somebody tell me how many times he says it in this video. But he said other people would have panicked. What do you mean? What did you do? Like, ain't nobody saying you you full on pet, but you got hit. You fell to the ground. You were getting stumped out. What do you mean other people would have panicked? What what more can you do in that situation? You can't really run off. It's hard. They're already basically surrounding you. So what is he talking about? I put this on my dead grandma Terry Grave, man. I'm like, man, I swear to God on everything I love, man. I'm like. Man, I think about this shit every day. Like, nobody know, like, what I went through. Like, somebody else would have panicked. Ma'am, it's like... Ma'am. Man, it's like, I don't know. Like, like it's like the devil was coming to get me. Like, it's like my like, like my soul. Like, I can't even explain. I can, I can kind of understand what he's trying to explain to an extent. Like you feel that that like energy and 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 once you got hit or once you was in that space, it just felt like damn, like my city, like damn, I'm about to be going. Then it was like if it was on some visual stuff, like your soul is literally leaving your body, like oh, shit. and then it just that just jump back into you. You feel me? I can I can kind of visualize what he's saying. I mean, I ain't never necessarily had that happen myself. You feel me? But I can I can understand what he's saying. Ain't it, man? I'm like it's like my soul left my body, and I was. Up in the air. See what I'm saying? And I was just looking down, watching myself, all that, just watching everything going on. Ma'am, I swear to God. I said, Lord, please let me make it home. I come from, like, I come from praying people now. I know, like, like, come on, man, no matter what I do in life, nobody too good to be close to God. I don't care. That's a fact, though. How much of a killer you is. How much of a rich person you is? Now that's my only thing is that Quando, I can I understand what you're saying as far as hey I was praying to God just let me make it home. So you can have I mean obviously this is you to yourself so you can have that type of sympathy I guess or that kind of feeling like bro like please man just let me make it home. But then you hear the news that King Von passed away, y'all still dissing him after. You still dropping songs that's mentioning him dissing him after. You still going at his whole camp, his whole, like, all that after the fact. So it's like, are you really grateful for the fact that you still here? Or did you just want to make it home just to make it home? Like, hey, I don't really, I ain't really trying to change nothing about what I'm doing or about my life or, you know what I'm saying? Not talking about the people that's deceased or already gone or families who hurting, you feel me? I don't really care to change none of that. I just want to make it home type thing. Which one is it, you feel me? How much of a big dog you is? How much of a stand up dog you person you is? Like it don't matter. Anybody could be close to God, and I'm I pray a lot, even though I do what I do. 
Like, even though I know I ain't living all the way right, nobody perfect. We human. I still pray to God. I t on, like, I'm like, Lord, please, like, just on some out loud screaming job, like, out of body experience type job, like, Lord, please let me make it home. It's like everything went back normal. And I've been back down. All I know is I look up and I see my partner on the ground. You feel me? Shot up. So I'm like, he shot. He shot. Like, I'm like, he shot, y'all. Like, I'm screaming out, my partner shot. Because, mm -hmm. mind you, he got shot four times right. that exact night. And a couple months before that, like, with a couple of incidents happened in my whole time, he been shot five times. Wow. Like this man, I took nine bullets. Right. You feel me? Five times a couple months before the incidents, four times that night. And there were other shootings going on in that. Man, there was too. so many people shooting, man. If you was there, you wouldn't even. If you was there. You would be hurt from everything that's going on because nobody really know. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I see my partner shot up. Like, a lot of people saying that I was trying to take bro chain. Like, ma'am, this is like being in Afghanistan and two soldiers shooting it out with two other soldiers and a bag of money in the middle of the ground. Ma'am, you think people in the middle of a shootout, you think so many bullets flying, you think people think about that bag of money? Well, I saw his manager, Chuck, said he didn't even think he had a chain on that night. Ma'am, I don't, ma'am. But he wasn't sure. But I'm not even sure, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Why does he but, keep saying ma'am so much? Like, Well, I guess Angela Yee is a little, like, what, 15, maybe 20 years older than him? Because he got to be, like, maybe 20. But a it's chain, like, ma'am, that... Ma'am, when it come to jury, ma'am, only only people with bad intentions, ooh, clout chasing and stuff, looking to try to take a nigga chain. Okay. Only people with bad intentions, sir. You didn't have bad intentions for that man, to one to some extent or another. Y'all were beefing. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I heard that they were going back and forth at certain times on. Um, as far as like the Instagram story posts and all that type of stuff, you feel me? What do you like? What do you mean? Man, I'm a fifty, sixty thousand dollar chain, man. I'm like a nigga could go buy that. Mm -hmm. That's fifty, sixty thousand. Like that's not nothing. Plus, little Tim over here got shot. You're not thinking about taking part his chain. Over here. Mm -hmm. I'm knowing his bad situation. He just got shot up. What if he die, Will? Mm -hmm. So I'm screaming out. He's shy. He's shy. You feel me? Like, ma'am, ma'am, like, I don't, ma'am, I don't know where none of that came from. Right. I never, I never in life, ma'am, I never in life, ma'am, never in life. Sir, you see what I'm saying? These, these are the parts that people going to take and, and make a joke out of. Because this man is like, I don't say he low-key talking like he's a little bit high off the weed. And did the interview, which I'm sure he probably he probably did smoke a little something, but the way he's telling the stories is like, nigga, you just press the same the same button ten times, ma'am. I would never, ma'am. I would never. Hey, Move on to the next part, my G. I never, I never in life, ma'am. I never in life, ma'am. Never in life had words with them. Ever. And you, at this point, didn't know who it was either. Ma'am, I didn't know this was him. Ma'am, I swear to God, on my soul, ma'am. Like, like ma'am, this is on neighborhood crip, ma'am. I did not know that was him till the next day. Y'all just heard what he said right there. Now, that's going to be one of the main snippets that, that, that can be taken from this specific interview, from this part two. It's going to be, he said, I didn't even know it was him until the next day. <sighs> and I know it's going to be some people who go about to go inch high private eye with it back to the Instagram stories and all that to see if he was posting about it or saying anything about it on that night as far as pull up on me or they was beefing on that night. 
He said he didn't. He said he had no idea that was him. I mean, really, regardless, even if you didn't know, what that really doesn't change anything, though. Still doesn't change the fact of what happened. I mean, you 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 knowing it was him or not knowing it was him doesn't that doesn't really do anything for the story itself. But I feel like that's gonna be one of the sticking points from this part two of the uh, of the interview. But like I said, Brad. This is just a wild situation, you feel me? But like I said in the first one, it's just like King King Von has to be held. A, he, obviously, he's not here, so it ain't no need to just bash the man and do all that. But just as far as obviously, Quando Rondo is not. Because for for our reaction to part one, I said, or it was in the in the title, Quando Rondo says he's innocent. Obviously, he's innocent of shooting or of hitting King Von. That's obvious. Um, his guy, Lil Tim, was the one who actually did it. But it's like, I don't know, bro. Just the way he's talking in his interview is just like he just was at no fault whatsoever, which is like I can understand if you're saying just before the situation happened, uh, leading up to when it happened, and even after the people let off shots and all that, it was like, okay, I can understand him saying, I wasn't there on that type of energy. I didn't know they was on they was on that. I didn't even know they were that it was King Von and them coming towards me. I thought it was a random group of guys. I was letting them go by. They hit me, went down. He gets hit. I didn't even know it was him until the day after. I can understand all that, but it's like you're all you're you're almost trying to paint it like like you you're in you're not in the wrong by any means whatsoever, which is in a sense true, but in a when it's after the fact and you're still dissing the person is when it brings it like, okay, but now that you know it's that person, now that you know that he's passed away, now that you know all of these things, why did you still decide to, after the fact, continue to diss him, put out songs to mention it, and do all of that extra? And now you're in the interview saying it, like you're you're trying to paint the picture like, bro, I didn't know, no, I was just here doing this and they ran up on me and my guy, you know what I'm saying? Defending me, which like I said, is understandable. If you're getting jumped by 10 people and your guy has a strap on him, he's probably going to pull it out. But when you still understand all that after the fact and don't humble yourself and bring it and you still go back to, yeah, uh, F y'all or all, all the stuff he was saying as far as dissing King Von's camp or uh, Lil Dirk and them, it's like, what are you getting out of this? And how are you going to try and come in somewhat, not necessarily play vi victim, but play like, well, somewhat play victim and also somewhat play like you have no fault whatsoever, which you don't have fault in the fight or the shooting. But come on, my guy, you were still dissing them after like it was all good. Like you didn't care about that. But now you're acting like it's just like, I don't know, bro. That maybe that's just me. Y'all get like I said, I ain't a nigga that's in the in the street, so I can't speak too much on how they do their stuff out there. But if you gonna diss the man after the fact, after knowing everything that happened, you can't also look for sympathy on the other end of hey, well, I didn't have nothing to do with this. This was all them basically, and. You know, they, they ran up on me and they did this to me and I wasn't even, you feel me? You can't have both. Like if you had sympathy after the fact, or not necessarily sympathy, like, oh man, I'm sad the man passed away, but it, at least not taking it to the point where you're fully dissing the man after you hear that he's passed away. You can't do that and also look for sympathy at the, once you do this, this tell-all interview letting people know what happened. You feel me? But hey man, that's just my thoughts on it. Um, I'm sure he's going to be dropping more clips from this. Like I said, it's, it's looking like he definitely about to milk this interview as much as he can. Um, the one yesterday is over a million views, was number one on trending. This one's already at 100,000 views, dropped like an hour or two ago. So I'm sure this one's probably going to go up just as well. But hey, man, um, that's tough. That's tough. But y'all get down there in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this. Um... Just 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 drop y'all thoughts down there in the comments, bro. I don't really got too much else to say. 
But hey, we on the road to 20K subscribers, 18. I appreciate all the love y'all been showing so far. Let's keep it going, keep it growing. And like always, say y'all keep coming back, tuning in. I'm going to keep these videos rolling out. We're going to keep getting it lit over here. Catch y'all on the next video.